Bill Hurd from Hackaday. Today I'm playing with a universal active filter. That's a pretty cool little thing. Uh, it's universal, as I said. But this one's programmable or, or controllable, I should say. And I, I like that because it's a lot easier to talk about the subject when I'm not chasing all kinds of issues around with a, uh, the complexities of a filter. But first, let's talk a little bit about what a filter is and what it does. A filter is a way to select information that we want, or in this case, a select audio that we want. It also rejects as part of that, but we tend to think in the positive of, of what it accepts. So in this case, I've shown a uh, three-way speaker like we used to have in the old days. And here there's a woofer, a mid-range, and a high, and a, and a tweeter in the speakers. And when audio comes in to what we call the crossover, its job is to send the low frequencies down here to move this big cone of air uh, and get the power in there. But if you sent that same low frequency up to the tweeter, you'd pl probably blow it out. So the uh, crossover sends the lows down to here, but then it sends the highs up to the tweeter and, and gets you nice clarity in there. But if it sent those same highs to here and here, it would muddy the sound. So the little highs go to the tweeter, the lows to the woofer. And then what's left in the middle, you know, is the mid-range, and it goes to the mid-range driver. Well, this is what it would look like on a graph here. Uh, if this is low frequencies, remember 20 to 20K, they used to say in the old days. The, as the frequencies are coming up in frequencies, and this is going to the tweeter, finally the high frequencies start to come through, and this is called a high pass when we do this. And that's this thing here. The low pass is where it starts out, or, or very close to starts out. It might do something like that. Um, sending the low frequencies down to the woofer, but then it tapers off and, and uh, up at the high range, it's not passing any. By the way, we call this a band pass and a band stop is the way to think of this. And then finally, this is what we call a band pass filter, um, where the lows don't get through, the highs don't get through, but the middles get through. And so there's a band associated with this that this is allowed to pass. A, a band stop or band reject would look like this. And uh, we're not doing one of those today, but since we're talking the words, that's what it looks like. Let's start real simple here with uh, filter components, what makes up a component. And here I've shown just a simple low pass with two components and a simple high pass filter with two components. Low pass. Think of this capacitor at, like a battery. It stores voltage. It resists a change in voltage. So if this were a battery and you were like to connect it to a charger, disconnect it, connect it, It'd smooth that out. It'd be kind of like, well, I'm still 12 volts, and you're right across me, so I'm 12 volts, even if the input is uh, just changed to 11 volts. So low-pass filter, this resistor, uh, the, the response to this is a very linear 2pi uh, two, uh, two RC, 1 over 2pi RC uh, for this. And so you make this component bigger, and it'll slow down. You make this component smaller, and it'll speed up. Make this component bigger, and it'll slow down. Make this component. So you see there's a very linear relationship. High-pass filter. There is no direct DC path through this. If there's a sudden change on this end, the change will go away. It'll see it for a second, whatever can get across this bridge. But then it'll come back to normal. So only those events, those high-frequency events, get through. Now, the way I had to finally learned to think of a capacitor was uh, I was probably in fourth grade, and I had seen pictures, and they'd show the little electrons on one end, and I'm like, what? But then I realized it's kind of like pressure. It's like when, when the signal hits, it pushes a certain amount across, so it goes like that, and then comes back to its, to its default. And once I started to understand that, that the more that this, the, the better the capacitor was for conduction, in other words, the lower the capacitor, more and more of these electrons could get through, but then they'd still, at the end of the day, come back to where they started. And so only high frequencies can get through here. Um, a way to think about it, to tell the difference real quick, is low pass is closest to DC as it gets one hertz, one half hertz. Well, what's the next thing? Well, it's DC, right? There is no DC path through here. There's a very filtered DC path through here. Loves DC, right? So. Not to oversimplify. Oh, by the way, we call this uh, this is called a simple pull. I call it a real pull filter, um, meaning that there's nothing that is going. There's nothing unusual going to happen. There is no gain involved. You will never get a voltage out of this higher than what you put in, etc. So the 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 down the downside of it is it's simple, but it's just got a real gradual roll off compared to 
what we can get out of some other filters. And I'm going to show you those before we leave. We'll talk about Chevy Chevs and Bessel filters and those kind of things where you can get really outrageous responses, but you do it with a lot of trade-offs. So um, sloppy old RC filters, but uh, hey, they came first. The part I am playing with today is a UAF42, Universal Active Filter 42. You can see it here on the screen. Uh, it's an old part. I just pulled it because it's got an unusual property. Not unusual. It's got a cool property that we're going to play with today. And that property is it keeps us from doing math, which excites me. So here you can see... Um, the the chip itself at the bottom we've got op amps and op amp is gain and gain is needed when you get funky with filters uh, otherwise it's going to be that passive uh, slopey roll off I showed you I don't know if you can see this but here is some of the math you'll see that it uses the uh, the the frequency domain uh, known as s and uh, the, this math is not trivial unless you know how to do it. Here's a close-up on an excerpt from that from the uh, spec sheet. And, and now the S domain's been broken into regular math for us. But I still, I want to just have fun. I don't, I don't want to have to do all this, you know, all this math. I just want to show you what an active filter can do and how to play with one. So let's go back to the workbench. I'm going to show you how I used this part and what was unusual about it. That allowed me to uh, just get right into playing with. It. All right, we're on the bench here with the schematic of the UAF42, and it's pretty much a self-contained active filter. And by self-contained, I mean it's got some resistors and some capacitors in, uh, built into it, along with these op amps. And both the capacitors and resistors have been um, uh, have been uh, uh, trimmed by laser. And if you if you were to look closely at the math that I showed you that we didn't do, you'll find that you can't guess at these values when you go to make a, a filter. And these are nice round values here. Um, but if the tolerance was off by 10% on these, you can get some very strange effects. Um, whereas with an RC filter, you know the resistor gets smaller, it gets faster, the capacitor gets bigger, it gets slower. Not in a uh, active uh, uh, active filter. So um, it's got the high pass output here, a low pass output here, and you see I've drawn the symbol for both, and a band pass output here, and all they are is taps in various places on these three op amps as they talk to each other. And I'll show you that if you think about the signal going through this as, as a change in time, a change in phase, this op amp's listening to the future, this one's listening to the past, you know, that's the way I see these things. Um, but really, they're interacting very carefully to produce these um, these these outputs, these bandpass. What makes this part usable here today is that there are two external resistors, and when looking through the math, you see, I found that if they're equal, then I can tr I can trim this thing's frequency by only changing those two resistors. Um, they, they do want to be equal or again you get into a different area. So what I've done is I've got a dual gang pot that I got from like DigiKey and I've made these resistors track each other. So here's the board. Here's our dual gang pot and it's coupled into the uh, in place of these two resistors right here and uh, let's see what happens when we put it on the scope. So I'm going to show you a piece of test equipment here that we're going to use to uh, display the, the effects of our filter. And this is just my old HP function generator and it can do sine waves, square waves, that kind of thing. But what I'm using it for today is what's called a uh, sweep frequency generator. In other words, I'm going to sweep a frequency starting from 60, I'm sorry, starting from 80 hertz and I'm going to go up to 5 kilohertz. And then there's other things like uh, the amplitude, uh, you know, I'm going to set this for about um, half a volt of input, and that's going to give us the ability to uh, inject a variety or a sweep of frequencies where we know the starting and ending point, and then we're going to look at how the filter reacts. So again, this is my uh, sweep function on my function generator. I've frozen a sweep here where you can see it start and end. Um, this will be moving around later, uh, a little, it'll look a little noisier. But I wanted you to get intuitively what's going on, and that is here's the oscillator starting slow, and it's going faster and faster as this goes. 
and eventually as it goes all the way across the screen it'll be going it's it's fastest so later you won't see this as much you'll see just a couple bumps of the slow part and it'll look like a big smear um, but that's what we're doing is we're starting an oscillator at the low frequency and telling it to go up to a high frequency so here's our board with uh, a probe attached to view the high pass output and you can see as I turn the knob that the high pass part, which is, which is here, is moving up and down up to the top of the range. So set here, only high frequencies are getting through out of the sweep. Remember, the sweep starts at low frequency and goes up to a high frequency. All right, on our bench here, we've got all the probes plugged in, and on the oscilloscope here, I've got all the channels firing, and I've put it into dots mode uh, just to help with the display. So um, some of this is a little mushy, but you'll see what I'm talking about here. On the left is where our low frequency starts, if you remember. And here in the blue, this is the high-pass filter because it starts uh, not passing much and then balloons up and then from then on it is uh, passing high pass. This big old peak here is an artifact of the way this circuit is operating right now and a lot of times we call it a ripple um, or <laughs> just a non-linearity as far as I'm concerned at the moment. The middle one is our band pass. You see that it's not perfect. It's got some residual amplitude, not near as much as the high. And uh, then the, the low pass you'll see on the left hand side, it's pu pulling its low pass before it ripples out and then if I try and move it so you'll see I'm moving it down towards the low pass not much low pass going on a lot of high pass or I'm going to the right which is higher in frequency and now I've got a lot of low pass and I'm shortening up the the high pass and meanwhile moving around in the middle is is the band pass so we've got three different functions coming out of uh, out of this filter at the same time so I'm going to stop there for part one uh, come on back for part two. We're going to stick some static signals in. Let's stick a square wave in, see if we can make a sine wave. And uh, let's pump some music to it. Actually, have it do the crossover thing like we showed. And uh, to my left, you see the uh, slow sweep frequency. We'll actually uh, throw that on the speaker. See if we can hear what some of the sine wave stuff does, what it sounds like in the harmonics. So, uh, Bill Hurd uh, from Hackaday, I'll tell you to keep on hacking, but I'm going to tell you to come on back for part two, actually.